Hi guys, I'm back again with my Hyperberry Anuitisera Corn Snake Sapiron, and he's been behaving pretty well today. So I wanted to do another, go ahead and do another video for Advanced Corn Snake Husbandry for the information that the care guides often forget. So let's go ahead and get started. And in this video, I want to talk about humidity and how to control the humidity. So corn snakes, they like a good 45 to 65 percent humidity. They do pretty well in there. You keep it in that range, and they're happy. And you probably won't need to do anything unless they shed. The shed. I, I find that 65 percent is okay for shedding, so you don't need to add a humidity box for them. It seems like. But if you live in a dry, drier place, like with like 45 or below, then you're gonna want to add a humidity box for when they shed. So that's the t that's the humidity that they like, and they can handle handle the humidity going a lot higher. I've had Alex when I first got Alex Straza, I had to I had to keep it at a friend's house until I can get my my Serpentarium set up over here. And with Alex Straza, I wasn't able to really fully explore how the humidity is controlled with the air holes. So I kind of had a guess, and boy did I guess wrong. I started with 20 air holes. Ooh, she was in that for like a month and to, until, I was, until I swapped that out because I didn't realize like how bad the humidity was, was going up just because of the, the air holes. So I was able to swap that out and I, I switched to 80 air holes and that made a dent that made a dent the humidity was down a good it was down quite a bit but it wasn't enough 80, 80 air holes was enough I went to 160 air holes it wasn't enough and on this enclosure I believe I have about 220 or 240 air holes I do a pattern so it's easier to, easier to add them up when I go to add them up and I find that this is okay. Um, the humidity in here is on this indoor humidity. Well, it says 64, but it was closer to 70 before uh, before I opened it up because it's been open for quite a bit. Because I screw up on I screw up on making videos and I have to start over start over again many times. So the humidity is actually pretty decent in here. As for the um, as for my overall humidity, you can I can look at this hydrometer and as you see it's. 57% humidity and actually covers up a little bit when I'm in here because apparently when you're a big guy and you sweat a little bit you put it produce off a, quite a bit of humidity just on your own even when you have a nice air, air conditioner going so the humidity all these are just different factors you can have for your humidity and how to control it on different factors play into your humidity so air holes are key on a box like this, is a 37. This is the 37 gasket box from Sterlite, and these I find probably do best with 280 air, air holes, and that's how much how many air holes this has. So with the 280, they do. They, well, let's go ahead and look at the humidity. So I have a, a hydrometers slash temperature gauges in here and that says 62 percent humidity which is actually only a few degrees higher than that humid the out out the room humidity so it's actually pretty good I'm actually really happy with this it works really well in my in my coastal 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 environment area so it works well for me the next thing you're going to look at is different types of enclosures now. So you have your your plastic tote box, your plastic enclosures, which include the tote boxes, and some PV, PVC enclosures, which can be cost effective at times. With these with these type of enclosures, often they don't have much ventilation, so you need to keep track of the other factors and what you're using in your enclosures. You can use a smaller water bowl to give better in to to get the humidity lower, or a larger water bowl to add even more humidity. 
the water wall is actually a pretty big key in keeping the, keep the humidity right, no matter what type of enclosure you are using. Now, if you're using a screen top enclosure, uh, that's going to play a big factor in your humidity because the humidity inside the tank is actually going to be probably going to be a little bit lower than the humidity in the room. Actually, it could be right, right on point depending on the type of heating you're using. So if you're using a, um, a screen top aquarium, you want to go ahead and use a, you want to use an under tank, under the tank heat or a heat mat like you see here to raise the temperature under the tank or under the part of the tank as you see as you see with that one and that will allow your humidity to I'm trying to see does your head that will allow your humidity to, to your bedding to stay a little bit more moist and work really well for you when it comes down to the if your humidity is so that works well if you're in a in a more drier environment where you need to hold more humidity if you live in a dry environment you really need to say goodbye to that heat lamp because unless you're gonna mist your enclosure and do everything you can to keep that humidity up the heat lamp is really gonna zap zap that humidity right out of the enclosure so, if that's the case, if you're having you need to get your humidity up high, or you're living in a desert, switch over to like forest floor, and that's an aspen bedding. No, no, this is the aspen. Uh, that is a cypress bedding, and that holds humidity and, and doesn't mold very easily. And it's a very good, you know, bedding that you use for ball pythons and boas. Or you can use the repti chip, which um, is also mold resistant, and that's a coconut husk based based bedding. And both of those are pretty good for ge keeping your keeping your enclosure nice and moist, especially if you're using a heat mat, and especially if you live in a desert. If you live in the in the coast, on along the coast, you kind kind of gonna want to use aspen bedding. And maybe, a, uh, and then maybe use a use a heat lamp to even get more humidity out. The heat, the heat lamp is going to play a big part of it. So, if all that all that's going on, and you still having problems getting your humidity just right, there's two more things you can do to either get your humidity down, to get that humidity down to the levels you need, or get it up to the levels you need. One of those is getting a de dehumidifier and just put it in the room that you have it, that you keep your corn snake in. Um, that way you can get your humidity down to the levels that you need. And this is rather extreme and honestly, I people have been using, I mean you wouldn't think of it, think about it, but people have been using dehumidifiers to hack their environment for the reptiles for a while now. I heard of someone doing a bioactive enclosure with a waterfall for bearded dragon. Bearded dragons don't need a waterfall. It looked cool and I asked how do you and this came up because I asked how do you keep the the live plants inside of a bearded dragon's enclosure when the high plants the live plants need to be watered and the bearded dragon needs to stay dry. And I was like, I just used the dehumidifier. I was like, that makes sense. The other thing you, so on the flip side, if you need to do a, um, if you need to get your humidity high for a long term, and this is a long cost and pollen for you, then you can try using like a little foggle. And you know how that run for like five, five, maybe 10 minutes a day, probably closer to five depending on your type of enclosure, just to bring humidity into the enclosure. And that will work. So one thing I want to go ahead and bring up is just, you know, the stress tolerances of corn snakes. As you already know, corn snakes are pretty bulletproof. Like unless you do something way wrong or the corn snake got some kind of infection, it's probably going to be pretty healthy overall. 
and it takes a lot to really screw something up pretty badly. So, if your humidity spikes up for a couple, for like a week because you're having heavy rain, like seasonal rain in your area, it'll be fine. Your corn snake we can handle the handle that that you know eighty five percent humidity and and whatnot. If it, if your humidity gets really low for a while, it'll probably be fine. It'll probably be fine too. It, fine too. If you see your snake goes into blue. Or starts getting stuck shed. You need to go ahead and do something about that. I do recommend Snake Discovery's video on how to give you, how to deal with stuck shed and how to give your corn snake a, a bath when they, how to give your snake a bath. I've had to do that. I've had to give a snake a bath already. Uh, once before. And Emily's video on Snake Discovery does a great job. Alright guys, well thanks for watching. Definitely stay tuned stay tuned for more advanced guide videos on Coast Snake Husbandry. And if you have any questions, you know, shoot them down below and you know I'll definitely try to answer them the best I can. Or if I can answer them, or if you know it's a good pretty good question, I might just do a video on it. Definitely stay tuned for more advanced guide videos and we'll have a great time enjoying corn snakes together. See ya.